be here today. I'm Kia, the owner and founder of Kiari, which is a luxury shoe brand. I'm here with a few students from the Icon 360 grant, which was awarded a grant for a few of the HBCUs. So guys, could you give a brief introduction of yourselves? So hello, my name is Sydney Griffith. I am from Chicago, Illinois. I'm currently a senior, graduating senior at the University of Arkansas at Pine Bluff, majoring in merchandising, textiles, and design. Amazing. Hi, everybody. Uh, my name is Lauren Sneeves, and I am from Greensboro, North Carolina, um, and I go to North Carolina A&T State University. Um, I'm majoring in fashion, merchandising, and design with a minor in psychology. I am, hi, hi, how's everybody doing? Hi, I am Jeffrey Thomas. I'm a senior fashion and merchandising major from uh, Nashville, Tennessee, a graduating senior, and I am at Tennessee State University. Hello, guys. Um, my name is Gloria Myler. I currently reside in Danville, Virginia. Um, I am a upcoming senior at Norfolk State University, and I major in fashion design. Awesome. So let's jump into the questions. Selecting a major could be difficult on attending college. What are you guys' majors and what was the interesting thing about selecting that major? Um, I can go first on that one. Um, so yeah, I'm a fashion merchandising and design major. Um, and so our program at ANT combines the two. So you get, um, you get education and knowledge um, in fashion design, as well as fashion business and merchandising um, and all that good stuff. But when choosing, my when choosing my major, I wanted to focus heavily on the fashion merchandising side because I am more interested in the business side of the fashion industry. Um, mm -hmm. And the main thing that got me interested in that particular specifically was um, I actually saw a documentary once about New York Fashion Week and for a segment of the documentary it followed this guy this man around um, named Ken Downing and he was the um, senior vice president and fashion director for Neiman Marcus for like ever for like a long time um, and so it was following him around and I just saw you know the the influence he had and I was I saw the life that he was living and um, and I really sat down because at first I when I was younger, I thought, you know, fashion design was, that's all the fashion industry is, just about fashion design. And when I saw that, it really kind of opened my eyes into how much more there is um, in the fashion industry. Um, and so seeing him and I just really felt like, oh my gosh, I feel like I could do that and be successful at it. And for someone like me who is really creative, but also um, who also values uh, academics and intellect and, and you know, structure, it allows that flexibility to still be in the fashion industry, which is a creative industry, but still be in that um, kind of that more right brain uh, lane. So that's kind of what drove me to my major. Awesome. Okay, well, um, like once again, my major is merchandising textiles and design. Um, I started my freshman year at UAPB um, fall 17 as a biology major actually and I stayed with it for a while for about two years until I realized that it was something that I really wasn't interested in fashion to me was just a hobby it wasn't something that I thought could be a career even though you see more African-American people becoming successful in fashion growing up you did not see that so it just I decided to focus on a passion instead of something that was practical. So that's how I cho chose my major and I've been loving it ever since. Awesome. So I chose mine based off my university. Um, in a sense, I got to, I looked at other PWIs that had accelerated fashion programs and I'm actually a Tennessee State legacy. So of course my family was Definitely going for Big Blue. Um, but when I got here, we had fashion and merchandising. And even though I'm more on the design realm of the fashion industry, 
I found out that our program gave you both the design and the, like Lauren said, that fashion education. So not only do we know how to, you know, design clothes to a certain aspect, but we know how to run our business, you know, keep our books. So with my major, I was able to, with my major being at Tennessee State, I was able to learn about fashion and also incorporate that. Um, we were always taught to use your, you always taught to use your campus as your test market. So with that knowledge, uh, with that knowledge firsthand, I created a clothing line just for my university. So we've kind of got the best of both, you know, the best of both worlds here um, and created the two, but I chose mine off the off of my university, I still wanted to come to HBCU, and I'm glad I decided to uh, to go ahead and do fashion merchandising um, and stick with that design aspect as well. Um, so for me, as far as um, how I chose my major, I knew that I always wanted to do something relating to fashion and the fashion industry. So like, even when I was like in middle school, I was like, okay, I want to this is what I want to do, like, you know, when I get older. Um, and Norfolk State, they had for fashion merchandising, but right before I came, they had, like, did away with that, and they was doing, like, just fashion design. So due to the fact that I was still interested, I did go with um, fashion design, but once I started actually, like, getting into the classes and stuff, that's when I started realizing that it was actually more than just fashion design when it came to fashion and I'm actually um, leaning more towards the textile industry of everything. Um, so we learned some of that in like at Norfolk State and that's what I plan on um, pursuing like once I leave Norfolk State, but that's pretty much how I came into it. I love that you guys are actually going for, you know, what that something that you're passionate about because when I, you know, I attended Clark Atlanta University, which is the HBCU, and I was, so I wanted to do fashion, but I just like Sydney said, you know, you want to do something you're passionate about, but something more practical, so I just decided to pursue the business aspect, and lo and behold, like 10 years later, I'm actually doing fashion, so I just kind of regret not doing business and fashion when attending college, so I think you guys are 10 steps ahead of those who are like afraid to really go after what they are really passionate about. Um, so the next question is that, you know, there have been a few changes in, within the fashion industry. What hope or what do you hope to see in the fashion industry next? I can go on that one for me, um, specific, specifically because I'm always like the only guy in the classroom. I really want to see more males uh, tap into this industry. Fashion is so broad now. And especially with uh, with brands like Telfar, um, we're really starting to see like fashion is, and also what a lot of people don't understand, especially with going to HBCU, that fashion in a sense is kind of like a male dominated world because of the brands, all these brands that we love and that we admire, these fashion houses, they're men. Okay. And somewhere in between that time, it became very feminine, where that's that's for women. That's what the girls do. It's like, well, what are you wearing? You're wearing Christian Dior. That's that's a guy. Um, but I would definitely like to see a little more um, diversity Agreed. amongst the, uh, the male ratio. Absolutely. Anybody else? Um, I would say something that I've been thinking a lot about lately is seeing, is wanting to see more, um, I mean, black, but also just other people of color um, in, you know, those executive leadership roles, those, you know, top, those top dog roles who really make the rules instead of follow them. Um, I was, I watched a webinar um, last semester as a part of one of my classes um, with the business of fashion, and they had uh, Telsha Anderson and um, Sam Loven, I think that was his name, but he was uh, a vice president, I think at Nordstrom um, in their buying department or something like that. And they were talking about the future of buying and what that looks like for retailers. And they were discussing, you know, it's great 
and I 100% agreed with everything they said because they were talking about how great it is that you know so many of these companies and uh, brands are opening doors to help people like us get our foot in the door. But also there are so many people who got their foot in the door and have been you know, climbing and working um, and has still been stifled from reaching that, you know, those top spots. And I would really like to see the changes and innovations that could be made um, by people being able to gain those opportunities. And I feel like a lot of hot water that these companies find themselves in, they could easily avoid by having, you know, people who understand the issues at the top. Absolutely. And another thing, uh, goal setting is really important in any field. So what's the big goal you have um, work for you in your future field? Gloria or Sydney? That one was a hard one for me because I've been looking at that question like, mm -hmm. I don't want to just say I want to have my own brand because everybody wants to have their own brand. Like that's a goal of mine to be able to connect with other HBCUs like I'm doing now and other students. I've always been big on helping people. So just in the future, I hope that I'm in the position to help people at my HBCU more than the help that I've received myself. Awesome. Yeah, um, basically backing up on um, what Sydney said, um, the goal for me is to really, like when it comes to um, my future career, I really want to progress and learn everything that I can learn and then eventually, you know, give back to someone else who, you know, may, because it, it's a lot of people, I feel like who are somewhat scared to, pursue fashion and like you know with me being like one of those people when I first came came in because you know you always have like people in the back of your ear telling you oh well you're not going to make much money doing you know so and so and so so um for me I really just want to learn everything that I can get out of my career and then basically share it with people around me and like she said like get back to like HBCUs and stuff like that and just let them know like hey like this is what I did you know you can do it too I love that so we're all inspired by people and their stories and their achievements who's someone that inspired you and why um, so many <laughs> uh the person that I think inspires me the most at this current time is Kirby Jean Moss the creator of Pyre Moss. The first time I ever saw him was on this Amazon Prime design contest. And they wanted him to eliminate the black contestants so bad. And he walked off the set and they like showed the whole thing. And I was just like, I like that about him. And that really inspired me because a lot of people get up and become successful. And then they forget the people that helped them become successful. So it was just very inspiring to see that. And ever since then, I've been following his journey and his last line was amazing. Looking at all of the creative things that black people have done throughout the history that a lot of people don't even know about. Mm -hmm. um, somebody who actually just made uh, my, ins my inspirational list. Um, her name is Carla Harris. And she is um, actually on the board of directors of the company that I'm interning with this summer. Um, and so uh, we got a chance, all the interns got a chance to hear her speak um, on Monday. And she, um, she's, a, she's a senior manager and director at, a, at an investment firm. So she's not in the fashion industry, but you know, she was really talking to us about navigating corporate America and navigating any kind of business setting and how to, so she called her advice, she called it Carla's Pearls. And so she was sharing, you know, her pearls with us and insights into how to be your authentic self. And she's written two books. And so right after her talk, I went and bought both of her books. And so I'm reading those now, but she was just, you know, she was very confident and she was uh, insightful and engaging and she was definitely an inspiration to me because I found her to be very admirable um, so Carla Harris so I actually don't have a specific 
a specific person. Um, now I do enjoy um, my favorite designer is Christian Dior because um, I mean couture, and I just love everything about what uh, what that couture era represented. Um, just the the idea of of just going outside of your house was just the fashion show. I mean, the outfits when people were getting on the airplanes were just so detailed. I love it. But now I actually keep a collection of the African-Americans that are very fluid in the fashion industry. Um, so for example, like the editor-in-chief of British Vogue, um, I found out that he was black um, some time ago. And that was just so exciting for me because I was like, oh my God, you know, we're over Vogue, not in Vogue. We're over Vogue. We're running this um, as well as uh, fashion designers as well that, um, that are uh, within, the, within the States that now have taken over um, uh, Jay Bolin. That's one of the stylists down in Texas. He dressed just about everybody at the Stella Awards. Mm -hmm. um, but I do. I keep a, I keep those close to me because their success doesn't seem and not ragging on their success. Their success doesn't seem unreachable. They they tell you this is where I'm from. I started from this place right here. Now look at me now. It's not this long grandioso year stretch. Of, of time it um it makes it look very achievable right. um as well and then i sprinkle a little bit of oprah winfrey on there on her on her take charge this um i mean she does everything so detailed so i put that in all my work um but yeah so just a, a little bit of a combination that inspires me so you kind of asked the, uh, answer one of the questions like who are who are you guys' favorite brands and how would you describe your, your style Mine's versatile. Oh. I'm, um, you can't really tell, but like I'm wearing a double breasted blazer right now. Um, <laughs> jeans that I have on like leopard print loafers. <laughs> um, you can't see that in this little square. Um, my style is very versatile. Um, I actually, uh, wrote a paper about, um, uh, about the psychology of fashion and what, what you put on your body, uh, means to you. Um, favorite designer of mine, um, I don't, I don't know if I can pick one. <laughs> um, let's, let's go with this Dior. Uh, I love the, the aesthetics of Dior, Tom Ford, um, the eternal style from Burberry. Um, also I have an obsession for like Birkin bags, you guys. Um, like I'm so like, <laughs> <laughs> those are my favorite though. <laughs> Gloria, what about you? Um, so for me, um, as far as like brands, I don't really have um, favorites. I mean, I'm kind of like the person that just like likes, you know, what I like. Like if I um, see it and I like it, I'll like get it and whatnot. Um, and I try not to like limit myself to like different types of brands and stuff because I do want to constantly, you know, you know, like expand, you know, like my wardrobe and like my taste, you know, just step out the comfort zone um, from time to time. But um, as far as my style, I do like to be very comfortable, but cute at the same time. Like I love the whole baggy pants, anything that's big, big and baggy. I love it just to like, you know, throw it on with like a nice dress shirt or something like that. And I'm also, I don't know why I'm like so like involved with like the old days or like the eighties, but I love like eighties and nineties fashion. Like that's just something that I wish would like just be here forever. Hopefully it will, you know, like fashion always comes and goes, but I'm so obsessed with like eighties and nineties fashion. Nineties is an eternal vibe. Like nineties, a little bit of early two thousands, <laughs> like give me a flip phone and a Sean John track and I'm good to go. That's a we're good. quick little pig and I'm good. That's it. I have one. I missed it too. Um, for me personally, I love. Uh, <laughs> personally, I love fat. Uh, I don't love fast fashion, but with being in my twenties, that's what you're most accessible to. So I love street style and things like that. So people from my hometown, like Joe Fresh Goods, I love his designs. They're very authentic. He gives back to the community and things like that. So that's one of the brands that I like. And I'm a good, I'm an avid online shopper. So places like Misguided and Boohoo, like even though they're not necessarily black owned or anything, like I still like that they have a little bit of quality, but they have a discount. Mm -hmm. <laughs> 
<laughs> actually, I can agree 100% with that because <laughs> this year I'm actually putting more effort into investing into some more sustainable uh, fashion and a more sustainable wardrobe. But up until now, I have really relied a lot on fast fashion. Like this whole, I think this is all from Pretty Little Thing and Forever 21. Um, but I'm definitely like, I ordered two, I actually ordered two Teflar bags a couple months ago that should get here next month. So I'm proud of that purchase because you know, it's black owned and good quality. And one of the first big fashion purchases I made, I mean, people, when people say big fashion purchases are luxury, they automatically go to the thousands, but a couple hundred dollars to me is, is a luxury. So, um, but like, I'm just trying to, I'm, I'm working right now on refining my style. I would say right now my style is very versatile and I kind of just wear what I feel. Um, but I do want to kind of create a persona or, or um, just a more refined wardrobe that really says, you know, this is who Lauren is. Um, and people can see that when I walk into a room. That's the goal. Right. So um, as I stated, I attended Clark Atlanta, which was amazing. Uh, just being around the culture and the events and the environment and also the education and also, you know, just having the connections with the different courses they were um, providing to students was amazing. I was able to receive so many internships and a job after college. So just a, another question is, how has going to HBCU shaped your experience versus a non-HBCU? Um, I can start this one off, but I actually went to a PWI my first semester of college. Um, and I just thought it was my dream school. It was the only school I applied to. I was like, oh, this is where I'm going. My aunt went there. We closed. I was like, this is perfect. Got there and I was like, oh, this is not it. So I actually took a year off of school um, and I was doing some different things and traveling and working and all that stuff. And then um, that next fall, I got invited. So my mom actually works at AT um, and she's been there for a, a while. And someone that she had connected with, he just came up to me. He's like, You want to go to AT? I was like, uh, Sure. I never really thought about it because I always thought I wanted to get out of Greensboro, but being, but actually, you know, saying yes and actually making that decision was one of the best decisions I feel like I've made just because the sense of community um, at an HBCU and at A&T, it's like, you know, we're a bigger HBCU, but it's still more intimate than going somewhere with 40 or 50,000 people on campus. Um, and so just community and the willingness of people to kind of reach back and, you know, pull you forward or to check on you. Um, people actually want to know what you're doing and they want to know what's going on in your life. Versus when I was at a PWI, I just felt so overwhelmed and I didn't know where to go. Um, and nobody was really just checking in on you. You were kind of just on your own. So HBC, like going to HBCU, I would say community um, is huge. Great. Yeah, for me personally, like you said, you only applied to that one PWI. I applied to no PWIs. I was set on going to an HBCU with my older sisters going to Jackson State and also Clark Atlanta. I just knew that uh, HBCU is just for me. Um, but coming in, I didn't pick fashion. Like I said, I picked biology. So I just was not really particular. You know, whoever gave the best scholarship, the best deal, on out-of-state tuition was the school for me. I like my HBCU because it is small. It's like less than 3,000 students. It's really small and it, sometimes it can get tiresome, but at the same time, you know, like she, like Lauren said, it's that community and it's somebody, you're not gonna be stranded. Even if you feel alone, you're never gonna be alone. 100%. Mine would be um, the also, connection. Oh, go ahead, go ahead. I'm sorry, go ahead. Mine would be the connections. I mean, we all know that HBCUs are, we know everybody. Or if, you, if we don't know them, somebody knows everybody. There are so many connections um, at a historically black college. I mean, 
the the alumni database here for TSU is insane. I mean, we have a couple of Facebook pages with over uh, 10,000 followers on there. So, and uh, if you were just to put, like for me, I had put one shirt out, you know, I sold out of that shirt in a second. Because of those connections, um, if you guys uh, go through Master P's page, after his son committed, he how he announced it, they had me commission a custom sweatshirt for Master P, which went absolutely viral. And by the way, y'all, if I never make that sweatshirt again, I'll be okay. <laughs> everybody <laughs> wanted it. I'm so sick of making it on in all honesty. But those connections are amazing. I can honestly say that I don't think I would have gotten that. And I and I wanted to go to a PWI. I'm here to say I wanted to go to a PWI in Nashville. I visited the campus. I told my mom, I'm not applying to TSU. I'm not sending my ACT score there. I'm just not going to do it. I don't want to do it. And that's just that. And she forced me to do it. And I'm, I'm glad I did. But the connections at my HBCU are absolutely amazing. And, and anybody else going to HBCU can say, when you, there's no reason why anybody graduates without a job offer or, you know, that foundation, because it's there. Um, I feel like, like what Sydney, to back up on what Sydney said about, um, like community and like also what Lauren said, um, I really do feel that at my HBCU, um, I knew when, when I first got out of high school, it was HBCU or nothing. Like that's all I wanted to do. Um, and that's the only school that I wanted to like go to was the HBCU. And when I got to, um, Norfolk state, it just felt good to, you know, not have to change who you are to try to, you know, fit in. Like you're there with people who share the same stories and struggles that you share. And even like when I was just feeling like so overwhelmed with like school and, you know, didn't know what to do, like my professors and they were like there for me, like, you know, letting me know, like, you know, it's okay. Like they were just always like making sure that I was okay. And I really appreciate them for that. And I also feel like, and like, even if I went to a PWI, I wouldn't have gotten that same, you know, experience and that same push that they be, that they give me. And it just like, it really like just made me feel like this is, this is, I did the right thing, like, as far as coming to HBCU. All right, definitely a family environment. Um, so that will conclude.